it's Kayla and I'm coming at you guys today with some tips and tricks for college specifically for Chapel Hill because that's where I go but you can try to implement these tips at whatever college you are planning to go to so I'm going to talk about some different categories and I'll leave them on the screen for the timestamps in case you want to skip ahead to certain sections let's get started so the first thing I'm going to talk about are things to pack these are things that may not be on your college packing list but I still think that they are pretty important and they kind of made my life easier slash I wish I had them to make my life easier. The first thing is a microwavable bowl or plate. If you buy a plate or bowl you have to check there's usually like a sticker on the bottom or something to make sure it is microwavable because if it's not then it will definitely warp in the microwave like my plate did. The reason why you might want to bring a bowl or plate is because there are a lot of free food events and some of them might be bring your own bowl. I know that I went to a couple of those and I didn't have a bowl, but you should probably bring a bowl in just in case. And honestly, sometimes you end up eating a lot more food in your dorm than you originally expected. Next thing is one or two Tupperware containers. There are, again are a lot of free food events and sometimes you can take food home with you and they don't have to be glass or anything. I know my roommate and I, whenever we bought ham, we would save the plastic containers that it came in and just reuse them. The next thing is a blanket or a towel. A towel specifically for like the pool because if you plan on going to swim in the indoor pool or even like the outdoor pool then you're probably going to want to bring a towel with you. And also you could use the towel slash blanket for sitting on the quad when it's nicer weather outside so that way you don't get grass stains on yourself or your clothes. Next is a suitcase. Now this one is kind of one where it's like, you know, some people might not need it, some people do. Whenever I went home, I would always bring a suitcase or a backpack or a suitcase and backpack just because I had so much stuff that I wanted to bring back home with me. Next are extra sticky strips. Well, I don't know what kind of wall we had. I'll insert a picture here. Things didn't stick to it that well. Even like with the command sticky strips, a hook all off, we would have to put like a new sticky strip on and then stick the hook to it and usually that would work. You were going to want to bring more because it's not going to be like a good ratio. Just buy like an extra pack of them or something. Umbrella or rain jacket or rain boots or all three or you know whatever combination you want because Chapel Hill has a lot of rain. If you bring an umbrella I would recommend bringing like an extra one just in case because sometimes it can get so windy that the umbrellas flip inside out or that they break or something that happens to my roommate. I love rain boots. Rain boots are great especially because it's kind of muddy, a lot of puddles. Rain boots are fantastic and I personally use a rain jacket. I actually have two rain jackets. Sometimes it can get kind of cold while, while it's raining so I like to put like a sweatshirt or something and then my rain jacket on top of that. And then I also have a life pack where you tie a rain jacket around your backpack and then you also wear a rain jacket or whatever so that way your stuff in your backpack doesn't get wet. Next is a vacuum cleaner. Some residence halls may say that they do have vacuum cleaners that you can check out, but mine didn't. And so near the end of the year, everyone needed to clean their rooms for you know the next people. And everyone was kind of like, oh no, freaking out because not that many people had a vacuum cleaner. And I remember lending my vacuum cleaner to people a couple times because they needed something to vacuum their room with. And plus, you know, college gets kind of messy and, you know, things just appear out of nowhere apparently. So, yep. Okay, so residence halls at Chapel Hill. My freshman year, I stayed in Craig North, which is different from Craig. This upcoming year, my sophomore year, I'm going to be staying in Morrison. I don't know much, and this could be completely wrong, but from what I can tell, Carmichael and Craig North have really nice rooms, especially the corner rooms, and I was blessed to get a corner room. My roommate and I actually wanted to get into Cory, but we didn't. But we wanted to get in there because, you know, I think the building is sort of new-ish. The rooms are nice. Hinton James, also known as Hojo, has a lot of outgoing people. That's at least just what I've found, you know. And Morrison has a lot of sophomores. That I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure. Usually, typically. I mean, I do know a couple juniors that lived in there. And then this is just what I think. I think that Stacy smells very, very funny. Not Stacy like a person, but Stacy like the residence hall. It smells really, really weird. And most of the, at least, some areas of the north campus dorms sometimes the buildings up there smell kind of funny because i think they're a bit older cobb is kind of nice i mean if you've been to orientation then you would have probably stayed in cobb so it's pretty nice so some room styles are i know that there are four person suites eight person suites and a hall style i think there's also something called a super suite but i don't really know much about that so with a four person suite it's two people per room 
two people and two people share one bathroom and you think okay you know that's cool the only downside is you have to clean your bathroom but it's not really that big of a downside because if you set up like a cleaning schedule thing and rotate it then it's not that bad for example like we had someone to clean the toilet someone to empty the trash slash like vacuum the floor and someone to clean the shower and someone to clean the sinks so each person had like one task and we all like so each week all four of us would be cleaning a different aspect of the bathroom so it wasn't that bad and also if you clean every week you know your bathroom doesn't get that gross. And then with a hall style, it's basically just, you know, two people living together in one room and then the whole entire hallway shares one bathroom. But I mean like, you know, there's a couple of different showers, a couple of different sinks, toilets, etc. And that's like the style Cobb is, I think. Eight person suite and that's what I'm gonna be living in next year. Basically it's just eight people living together, the four sets of two, and they all share one bathroom couple more things about residence halls there's a like each residence hall has a lot of their own events so kind of just like kind of keep your eye out for that and residence halls have study rooms and i love study rooms and if people knew me freshman year i was that one girl who was always in the study room or the, the lounge room whatever you want to call it small study lounge whatever you know different buildings have different setups and stuff oh also enhancements 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 each residence hall has like a little front office thing and that's where you can check out enhancements and you can go on a website to check what enhancements your residence hall has but basically they kind of have like pots and pans and board games and video games and cleaning supplies and those kinds of things that you might need to clean your room or just to have fun and stuff like that so you kind of just want to check personally i will probably if i do end up cooking buy my own pots and pans just because sometimes some pots and pans don't have the lids to them or people don't always wash them before they return them and so it kind of gets gross so it's just a personal preference thing okay so i think it's called apogee stream tv i think that's what it's called basically there's this whole like process it's not that bad but it's an app that you can also download where you can basically watch tv so it sounds really weird but you know sometimes there might be shows or whatever that you like to watch and those shows you know i can't get on my tv at home because we just don't have those extra ones we only have like the local channels but basically it's free tv because if you're a student and it just uses your like onion to log in and you're all good to go next up is dining hall if you're getting a meal plan i would recommend getting the second most expensive meal plan because you just get more meal swipes i just don't think unlimited is that worth it if you like unlimited that's all great for you if you want to try it go ahead just personally i don't i had the i think 121 i think it was the second cheapest one if you do the math for that that calculates to about one meal a day near the end of the semester you can have two meals a day so each meal will be roughly twelve dollars i don't know i don't really think that the dining hall should be really worth twelve dollars i don't know but i do i do love the dining hall food my favorite thing ever is soy nuggets so good you should try them if you have the chance also theme nights are amazing i will pay whatever it costs to get into theme nights because theme nights are fantastic and if you're wondering what theme nights are it's basically where there's some sort of like event or theme obviously that the dining hall people do and they cook around that theme for example if there's like a carnival then i remember we had funnel cakes and caramel apples and some other stuff and then we had a masquerade night which is kind of like mardi gras themed and there were beignets and there were eclairs and so much shrimp and i think there were crawfish it's a fantastic time would highly recommend if, if you ever see a theme night keep your eye out for that if you get a meal plan you should always sit down and try to like calculate out how many swipes you can use a day and try to stick on that because if you use too much then you'll end up with not enough for the semester and you'll have to like go out and buy food i mean that's not horrible but you know you kind of don't want to be stressing about your food or if you had a friend who had extra, you know, and they want to swipe you in or they want to sell it to you, you could always go that route. If you have too many meal swipes, you know, again, you could swipe your friends in who didn't have enough or you could try to sell them, you know, like, oh, I'll swipe you in if you give me like five bucks, something like that. So a tip, if, if you're trying to save your meal swipes, if you get a to-go box, exchange it. So what I mean is like, so let's say you go to the dining hall, right? And you're like, oh, can I also get a to-go box? And they're like, yeah, sure, you know, and they swipe your card like a bunch of times and you kind of cry on the inside. And you go up and you eat and then you get your food and then you go down or, well, you, and then you go out, right? And then you wash out that to-go box in your um, kitchen or your dorm 
I would recommend the kitchen sink because if you wash food in your bathroom sink, it will clog your sink and then someone's gonna have to clean it. But basically wash it out, dry it out, right? But then you go back to the dining hall, if you take it with you, you know, you're gonna say, hey, can I get a to-go box? Or like, you know, can I exchange this for another to-go box? And they'll usually say yes, and you know, they'll give you like a new to-go box, and then you take it in with you. And since you're like exchanging it, they use less swipes, I think. This is what my roommate and I have kind of figured out when we're trying to like calculate our meal swipes. I don't know if that's just like sometimes occurrences or like all the time. If you want to try it, there it is. Another hack to save your meal swipes is if you swipe near the end of one period to like another period. For example, lunch typically starts at 11 a.m. So what I would do sometimes is I would swipe in around like 10.45. At 10.45, there's still some breakfast leftovers, like there might be like a pancake or two. Sometimes it's cold and maybe stale, a little hard or whatever, but there's still like, you know, some breakfast leftovers if you're still in the mood for breakfast. And then you just kind of sit in the dining hall, wait for it to roll over to lunchtime, and then boom, you get breakfast and lunch for one meal swipe. You're welcome. With a meal plan comes plus swipes, and you should try to think about your plus swipes strategically. I think that's the right way to put it because I would use my plus swipes on fresh and smoothies and like I said earlier a meal swipe is about $12 meaning every time I got a smoothie I was basically paying $12 for that smoothie but I will say those smoothies really fill you up especially if you get the biggest size I could never ever finish a whole cup of that and I tell a lot of people this and this is my life hack on how to get through school honestly which is to try to schedule your class around the dining hall schedule, which sounds really, really silly, but let me explain. A class that went from 10.10 to 11, and a class that went from 3.30 to 4.45, I think. Lunch would start at 11, like I said earlier. So, you know, my class, since it went from 10.10 to 11, as soon as I got a class, I went straight to lunch, and then that way you, one, get like fresher food because the food is, you know, just being unveiled and opened for people to consume it. And then also you can kind of beat the lunch rush and get a table. Because if you go to Lenore at 12, you're probably not gonna find a table. Especially if you have a big group of friends. Dinner starts at five. And my friend Elena and I, we would always do this because we would eat together on Tuesdays and Thursdays. But basically our classes would end at 4.45. So then we just went straight to dining hall. We sat down, you know, we talked for a bit and chilled and then waited for it to be five and then we got our dinner. That way you get a seat, unless unless it's a theme night, then you want to be there really early and that will bring me to another life hack later. If you're able to schedule, you know, your classes around dining hall time, that's what I did and that's how I got the best food. And there's an app. You could also just go on the website and type in CES menu and I'll pull up. I always, always, always checked the menu for the dining halls before I went to go get food. What I mean is that, you know, okay, so there's primarily Lenore and Chase. I mean, there are other places you can go eat, but those are the two I like to go to since I had a meal plan. So obviously Lenore and Chase are not going to have the same food. So I always like to check the menu before I go eat because sometimes Lenore may have something that I like and Chase may not and kind of stay ahead of the game. In the rare chance that you may have some free time in Chapel Hill, here are some ideas slash possible life hack to kind of have a great college experience. So first of all, a common saying of mine is I love that wall because I love walls and by that I mean I love wall mural and Chapel Hill has quite a couple actually I haven't been to the mall and if you type in Chapel Hill wall murals or something like that it'll pop up I love taking pictures and you can just go around on Franklin Street and take pictures of yourself with the wall murals and post them on Instagram it's a fun time another idea is you can go ride bikes I personally will not be doing this just because I've tried to ride a Tar Heel bike before and I cut myself and I crashed into bushes and walls and a lot of things and fell a lot. I'm short and I don't know why but the Chapel Hill bikes are so tall and heavy so I just could not ride but my roommate she loves riding the bikes and actually I think the app is called Social Bike or something. I'll try to find it and I'll insert a picture. You like link your card there, you make an account whatever and you get one free hour on the Tar Heel bikes every day. And there's a lot of free events on campus like all the time. How I like to find out about free events is I like to follow a ton of social media. I will put up some names of some social medias that you could follow. I usually use Instagram to keep up with events. It's up to you. The free events also have a lot of free food and a lot of free stuff. Um, 
I mean, sometimes you don't want more free stuff, but you also do. Also, there's an indoor swimming pool that you can go swim in. I honestly should probably bring a bathing suit. Next is play basketball. And, you know, there's a lot of rec centers that you can go and just shoot basketballs in. It's super fun. Sit on the quad, especially when it's nice out. People can throw out frisbees or footballs or just watch dogs because a lot of dogs come to campus and next is the Ackland Art Museum so those are some free things you could do some miscellaneous life hacks whatever you want to call them try to find a study spot and make a habit of going there if I'm in my residence hall then I really like to be in one of those study lounges I also like to go to the basement of the UL it kind of puts you in like the mindset of like okay let's work bring some water bottles or a gallon or two of water and the person inside of me who's trying to be a little bit more environmentally cautious is saying like oh no don't bring plastic water bottles don't bring plastic gallons but the thing is I'm pretty sure every year there's something wrong with the Chapel Hill water and what I mean is like my freshman year last year around I think in the fall semester there was some sort of pipe burst and water was out like we could not shower for I think two or three days like we could not use any of the tap water water fountain water or like shower water obviously because it's all coming from the same water we couldn't even flush our toilets. Have some backup water just in case. Heal mail, always check it. Sometimes they will pay you to take surveys. I, I think I got maybe $20. And also sometimes they'll tell you about free events and obviously your class work stuff. Enter every giveaway. Again, there are some giveaway survey stuff that will be sent to your email. Also on social media, like a lot. I think I won one or two giveaways. And that is like my next one, which is follow social media accounts. They'll tell you about free events. There will be giveaways. You get to know the organizations a little bit. There are job fairs and club fairs. Sometimes they have free food. Like Fall Fest is a gigantic club fair, basically. Free food. They have free shirts, free water bottles, stuff like that. Try to do your readings. I know that they can be boring sometimes, but split it up somehow. You're not reading like 14 pages in one day, but you're reading maybe three or four a day. Rent a book and split it with someone. So this may not always work for you, but my roommate and I took English at the same time, English 105. My roommate was like, you know, I don't really want to buy a brand new $20 one. Is it okay if I give you $5 when we split the book together? The thing that made it work is that I would have English on one day and she would have it another day. It just alternated the books. I would recommend for people who like to really kind of get in, de in depth into the textbook with the highlighting and the you know hours and note taking straight from the textbook I would recommend you probably want to get your own textbook you could rent it from the student store because renting is always a lot cheaper than buying new renting a book and splitting it with a friend is a pretty good idea I think try to do laundry when other people aren't gonna be typically doing it a lot of people will try to do it on the weekends when they have time because laundry takes a long time. I usually like to do it on the weekdays. And then try to have a routine. That way you waste less time. Buy things before you get to campus. I don't know why, but things are more expensive the closer you get to campus. Also, they do have some dorm essentials slash necessities, but they don't have a wide range. Target is really small, especially if you're trying to buy room decor or something. So the last thing I want to talk about are some apps you should download. First of all, Facebook. When you're in college, a lot of people will either tell you, hey, you know, if you go on Facebook, you might find a roommate or sheetmate or whatever, or you can sell slash buy stuff. And that is true. I bought my textbook half off basically and then you can also sell your textbooks to other people because obviously you're probably not going to use them again also sometimes it's a great place just to ask for advice and questions another app is group me i know that when i got to campus i had to download group me because all the people on my hallway were all in a group chat and group me and that's how we communicate with each other and i actually have a lot of friends and i met people through group me if you're gonna ride the bus which most people do end up doing download translock rider another bus app is next bus basically they show you the bus routes times stops and stuff like that next i have google maps if you're lost on campus and you know the name of the building you need to go to use google maps it has saved my life so many times if you're able to try to walk your schedule before class starts venmo chances are you're probably not going to have that much cash on you if you're going to have money it's going to be on like a credit card or debit card or something and let me tell you, everyone's like, oh, just Venmo me, or I'll Venmo you the money, or something like that. Another app is Outlook, and that's just for your email, because I can log into my email through the Outlook app, and so that way I can just have all my school emails on my phone, instead of having to look it up on my laptop all the time. And the app I was talking about earlier, where you can check the menus, is Carolina Go. Those are my tips, tricks, life hacks, whatever.
whatever you want to call them for UNC Chapel Hill especially and just college in general let me know if you have any questions or comment down below if you have any tips yourself that you want to share or just correct me if I'm wrong on anything. If you're a freshman watching this, congratulations, welcome to UNC. If you ever see me, you know, feel free to stop me, say hi, whatever. That is it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed, hope you learned a lot, and see you in the next video. Bye.